This is the Magic Word Podcast.com. Day three of Magic Live, and I say day three, it's always kind of mixed up to me because uh, Sunday is called day one, but really we just kind of register that day and have a big party and everything. But the activities really began yesterday as far as all of the things that had happened, and uh, you heard some of those things we had in conversations with some of the folks yesterday. I'm here with uh, one of my friends of the Magic Board and good friend, Daniel Will. How are you this morning, then, Daniel? Uh, I'm awake. <laughs> Well, and I'm so glad you are. Uh, I am as well. I got I actually I got a little bit of sleep last night. You were saying that the, the bar over here was full and it loud. It was full. I left at midnight, and uh, the two the night before you saw. Yeah, two the night before, and uh, I know somebody who didn't leave there till five a.m. this morning, and they're still sleeping. <laughs> Uh, well, that's why I had to get this podcast out, so I, went, I was a good boy. I went back. But, but tonight I'm going to come back down after I finish wrapping this up over here. Uh, then, so uh, yesterday we had a, a full day of activities, and that's why I wanted to just kind of recap a few of the things that happened. Plus, by the time that I closed last evening's uh, podcast, we really didn't go into last evening's activities, the things that happened. But uh, as far as the general session, tell me how, what... Uh, I thought it was a great first general session opening uh i think master Payne just knocked it out of the park yeah <laughs> it was a great way to just kick the whole thing off and as usual his powerpoint presentations are hilarious i have to uh say i will never forget that words of wisdom i will uh, never have a show or i'll, I'll never have what was it to me props that i will have to go back to the car for a second trip yeah that's right one trip to the car, that's it. <laughs> Good advice. Or from the car. From the car, that's right, that's right. Uh, I thought that uh, uh, Luis Tomatos just really, yes. what a brilliant uh, presentation that was. Yes, that was, uh, I was, I, re- I very much enjoyed that. I don't know a lot about the gentleman, but to hear him speak and to see what he did mm-hmm. uh, was just phenomenal. The more a backwards approach to what everybody else did and was successful. Yeah, well, they say it's backwards because when we had lockdown, he actually went into doing live shows, and then he did a blended show, and then when we were kind of back, he started doing virtual shows. Yeah, I think it would have been awesome to be in that parking lot in the car watching that. Yeah. Well, I remember that uh, Nate Bargazzi and other uh, comedians actually had, and I think some uh, bands. You're, you're in a band. I mean, some well, bands yeah, we actually did. Yeah, uh, we did in, uh, in 2021, we actually did a... Uh, Drive-in? Parking lot drive-in okay. show, and and we we convinced the uh, it's still live, right? yeah yes wow. we convinced the promoter to because we set up all our equipment and everything and and we convinced them to have a second night so we didn't have to tear it down right away. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, then let's see. We had um, the uh, focus groups and yes, uh, we had Joshua J and um, Mike Caveney and Christopher T. Magician. Which ones did you see? Uh, I went to Josh's first, yeah. and uh, and that was boy that went fast. Yeah, he just laid that out there, but his stuff's going to be in the notes. Um, and then I went to Michael Weber's uh, Rediscovering Wonder, mm-hmm. where he uh, took some just old classic items. Uh, and, it has uh, a new twist on it. Has a new twist. Yeah. I, I very much enjoyed the. Oh, I can't think of the name of that effect. The uh, color? Uh, no, the... Oh, the, you mean the rainbow? Uh, yeah, the ba- the band, or the, uh, what we know is a boomerang effect. Right. But there's a name for that, to some scientist, and with the rulers. Yeah. And that was just uh, phenomenal. I understand that Christopher T. Magician was talking more about family things. I was talking with uh, Trixie Bond, who was saying, yeah, that she attended that, and it was more about children and entertaining kids and things, so... Yes, which I think... for everybody, you know. Yeah, and I, I think they had a real good time in that room. Because yeah. when I walked by, there was toilet paper all over the place, cards <laughs> all over the place. I mean, it, there was a party in there. <laughs> Just like it would be at a regular kids' yes. show, I guess. As far as the evening goes, did you see the uh, close-up experience? No. I So I saw the session that was called um, Documentary Live Flashback. Okay, what was that about? Well, that was uh, supposed to be six performers, and unfortunately one of them tested positive and couldn't make the venture. 
but it was uh, uh, six well-known names. I don't want to let anything out of the bag because it's... A... Well, by the time this gets out, there'll be okay. just one more. So, so Mike Cavaney, Cavity was the host. Mm-hmm. And they showed footage... Cavaney, Mike Cavaney. Mike yeah. Cavaney. They showed uh, footage of when uh, Mike and uh, Kalen... Uh, uh, what's Mark Kalen? Oh, you're talking oh. about the on, on stage. I'm sorry. Yeah. I thought we, you were talking about the, yeah. yeah. Yes, Mark, uh, Mike Cavaney had uh, done that, and it was it was really kind of a one time only thing that he yes. was saying that you would uh, you're never going to get to see. It right. hadn't been seen before because there, it wasn't stock footage. They just happened to recently have yes. uncovered some of these black and white uh, presentations of uh, these guys performing back in the '60s and '70s. Yes. Completely yeah. different than what they do now. Right, like Mark Kalen was doing yeah. his pool shark act, which was quite enjoyable, especially the the mustache falling off. <laughs> um, but to to see them go back and recreate that, I mean, Paul Gertner coming out in a three piece white tuxedo and white shoes and everything, white shoes and everything, yeah, and silver hair looked perfect. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, unfortunately <laughs> Jeff Hobson was the missing uh, uh, performer. Yep. That would have been phenomenal to COVID. see. Yeah, yeah, yeah but to see Tina Leonard doing her mime and some of those moves yeah, that still doll act and yes. she was doing something with uh, dick cabot way yeah. back when in the television show yes. so it uh, and of course uh uh the legend from uh, bavaria i can't remember what they called uh yeah matt king matt i can't king. remember it was uh, yes mm. but his early routine yes where he wore <laughs> viking <laughs> horns back apparently when he so, used to uh, work with lance burton yeah and, uh, in so that was uh that was a that was a most enjoyable uh wasn't didn't know what it was going in you know <laughs> and uh, I think it was great. I think it played well. But, yeah, it had a great uh, – I was expecting something completely different. I thought they were going to be just kind of ch- having a recap of some of the past Magic Lives and things like that. But, yeah, oh. to see these guys. And then, of course, Mike Cave, as he closed, was doing his thimble act that he was, I guess, known for back at the time, back when, of course, Mark Kalen was known for his pool shark act. And everybody yeah. had it, – it, the basic thing about that evening last night was about the journey. In other words, yes. we are today where we are because of the path we have taken – that has been perhaps less traveled and more difficult. It has been quite circuitous to get to where we are. We we haven't been on a path saying we're going to do this. And it showed these people who are brilliant today and they were yesterday, but the path they took and they didn't continue on that. They learned things from that and they continued to to change and say, okay, what can we do better? Or then throwing it out completely. Yeah. Evolve. You know, yeah. And evolve. Exactly right. So that was kind of the takeaway from the evening show was the, the journey of magic to get to where we are, you know? Yep. Yeah. The uh, close-up, I thought, was great uh, as well. The, it's going to be out again tonight. Yeah, I'm supposed to see that tonight. I don't know if I can tell you about it, but I guess I probably can because <laughs> people, by the time they hear this podcast, it will have uh, everybody will have seen this. Uh, there are three performers, and for those who have attended Magic Live in the past, they have this uh, great uh, seating arena, So if it's you that will. nice horseshoe that they had? Correct. Oh, great. Yeah, That's so great. It's, it's raked that you look yep. down and everybody Very can raked. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, get there early to get a good seat. Well, I say good seat. I actually was on standby, and I had the back row, and I had a perfect yeah. view. I, uh, I was in the back row, uh, you know, in 19, I think, when they did it, or no, 18. And, uh, yeah, it's just a great venue. It is. And uh, and the three performers were just outstanding, uh, starting with Pitt Hartling from uh, Germany, and then Shudo Gawa, and then finishing with Aussie Wind. And three completely different performers, and everyone was a standalone closer that was just phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, doing uh, cards... Uh, both uh, well, the cards that uh, Aussie did were more signed cards. They're blank cards. People had signed when you come in. You sign these cards. And he uses the deck of cards then. But the others, uh, uh, Pitt just used regular playing cards, and then Shoot was doing coins and spoons, and uh, he was just great. You're gonna love it. Good. So look forward to it. So, uh, and then the other thing was I think Discovery or something. Yes, it was. Uh, it was Rob Zabek, Zabrecki, and uh, Stuart uh, McDonald. McDonald. Uh, it was called In Concert, The History of Magic. And uh, while it was a comedic approach, it was completely opposite to what we had seen earlier in the showroom. Because, uh, you know, Rob is such a uh, serious, quirky performer. Quirky performer. <laughs> <clears throat> and uh, he definitely was that last night, which was a great contrast to Stuart. And, uh, yeah, they took the book. The God, I'm drawing a brain. Oh, The Discovery of Witchcraft. And they started at the beginning, and yeah. they just kind of picked periods in time. 
Yeah. So uh, it was a, it was a very interesting approach. I think it played well. <laughs> it was a. Uh, I, I'm looking forward to seeing that. I'm seeing that uh, this evening. And uh, there are different. The other thing is opening tonight that uh, I think is just like a one and out, and it's the Museum of the Arcane, which we're not going to see. I mean, it wasn't there last night, but it's was, it was coming. Uh, this yeah, evening. I think so. I they kind of set right. up because that's one of those things they've had in the past where it's just uh, set up for the day and then it's gone. Right, it's the exhibit. They always seem to have an exhibit night. Yeah. Where there's a room that everybody can just go through and see the exhibit. So. Yeah, and if you miss it, you miss it uh, yep. because it's not going to be there then later. And yep. then uh, I think that's probably about all that we see that was uh, happening yesterday. I, it, that, that sounds like a lot, and it was a lot, and we've got a lot of people here. But then it's also just the, the people who are hanging around, you know, and seeing yes. people like you and others. That, well, I, and I think because we haven't had this event for two and a half years, <laughs> that everybody was is more focused on the connections and the people and seeing those people and interacting more so than sitting in a chair in a room. I mean, people are sitting in the chairs in the room, but... But we're next to human beings yes. instead of sitting in the yeah. Zoom room. And people we haven't been able to see, so... Yeah. That's right. This year, it's, people might be wondering, well, Scott, was there a theme this year? I, I can't say there's one that was uh, that comes to mind uh, yeah, I don't, I don't because in the past has been like friends or, you know, one word kind of a thing. Well, you know, right what here in the say? thing, they're calling it Celebrate. Okay, well, there you go. Yep. Celebrate. Well, you know, that makes sense yep. because remember when they had the listing of the people who had passed over the last year, yep. they said, we're not going to have an in memoriam. We're going to call this in celebration. Yes. And they, they, and they did a had nice a lot, job. They did a great job. They could have had a lot more people, but they, what they did is just mention some of the people who actually were tied to Magic Live, who yes. had performed here or have been registers, registrars. Uh, and others, so it was it was a little bit different. And the same thing than last evening's show, I guess. Now that you mentioned that, they were celebrating the journey that people have taken and what they have done and accomplished, you know, along the way to get to where they are today. You yep. know? So I, I guess yeah, celebrate is the, is the uh, theme. So take that back. I wasn't clear to me too. You just read that. So yeah. I'm glad you did. Yep. Thanks. Well, any other uh, closing comments as we start starting today? Anything you're looking forward to, or anything you bought at the dealer's room? Uh, too much. <laughs> Actually, this year I had a pre-planned hit list, and I stuck to it on opening night. Good man. And then yesterday, picked up a few other things. <laughs> other than that, yeah. yeah. A, a lot of toys there. There's yeah, well, really you know how it is. Yes, I do. Unfortunately, <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately, I do. I hope things I might not, I might not use, but in the moment, I go. I think I like that. So, a highlight for me, I will say, is meeting uh, Craig Petty. Uh, from England, and he's in the Penguin booth. Oh, okay. Yeah. Did you spend some time talking to him? I, I, I did, and uh, uh, it was uh, very nice. Yeah, I like a lot of the stuff that he does. He has, uh, he's kind of a card guy and, and some other things, but uh, mm-hmm. I like his thought process, and I like him just as a person. He's yeah. hilarious. So. Had you met, this is the first time you've yeah. met him? Yeah, I'd never met him before. I wasn't even familiar with him until maybe the past year. Yeah couple of the projects he put out you know they, you know it is you, something will either speak to you or not right so well thank you dan daniel appreciate well, that you, a lot. scott it's, it's good to see you seeing how uh you were responsible for uh bringing me into this crazy mass of people in magic back so, in 15 yeah i was so flattered whenever we had our thing and they said who was it that uh, is instrumental in your in magic and, we, and you put your name you know, thank you to so and so on your name badge, and you said yeah. me, so thank you. Yes, I appreciate that. And also, thanks for being a friend. And, and uh, speaking of buying things at the dealers, those who aren't at the Magic Live perhaps just saving some money, which means you might be able to make a donation. <laughs> Let me throw that in there while I'm here. That's we can it. certainly uh, use that. It seems like over the past couple of years, we've had people who've had to delete or to. Uh, alter, reduce their uh, pledges due to obvious reasons. Uh, but as things maybe hopefully start to turn around, uh, it'd be great. We haven't really added any new uh, friends of the magic word or had any new donations for quite some time. And I have not been uh, appealing to you as uh, I feel like NPR or PBS, but I haven't done that in a while. But I thought I'd just throw in a pitch that if you uh, can help us out, we certainly would appreciate it. You can go to the themagicwordpodcast.com where you can Find a tab there where you can join the Friends of the Magic Word and find out uh, how you can help us with your financial support. So thank you very much, and thank you also, Daniel, again, for being a My friend pleasure. in so many ways. Appreciate it, and thanks for helping giving us a recap. So until later, and uh, in the day, we've got a lot, more to do, a lot of stuff here to do. <laughs> that was Daniel Will and Scotty Allen.
We can do that. Awesome. We can wander as we wander. I'm, I haven't been able to make a full lap yet. Well, it's not quite as busy as it normally is. I'm here with Nick DeFott right now. Hey there, Nick. Scotty in. Hello, everyone. <laughs> so good to uh, see you. And how's your book sale? How are uh, sales doing? It's wild. We're down to less than 10 now. And how many did you have published? Did you get 1,000 of them? Uh, a, the printing or? was 2,000. 2,000, yeah. okay. So and I know, so people just don't misunderstand, there are more. So you can still get it. It's uh, just in here. You pre-order now. Yeah, okay. if you pre-order at Squash Publishing, uh, Gabe will have them hopefully by early June. They're on a ship in Long Beach, so we're kind of waiting on, you know, the other 80 ships in front of it. But... Uh, but hopefully in a in a timely manner. So that yeah. supply chain problem thing. Yeah, it's all it's all interconnected. There are printers that can't even get paper right now. Wow. Um, but the deluxe editions are going really fast. If anybody's interested in any of that, but what's yeah. the difference between the deluxe edition? It has a slip cover, right? Or a slip, slip case. Yeah, custom slip case with the, with the embossing on it. There, it comes with a bunch of my merch, like two posters. One of them is limited edition, just for the book. Uh, lens cloth thing. Uh, the full contact uh, it was other product that I released you get the videos from that which has like exclusive footage of Mullica teaching his version the original version Mm -hmm. that that, uh, you can only get with the product and uh, a couple other things so yeah I thought it was great that uh, conversation Mm -hmm. that you had yesterday in the session and talking about how to use something that is underutilized yeah you overuse uh, something that's underutilized totally we did a (laughs) stage queuing talk for the first time it kind of took a little peek into the, into my extensive overuse of, of that. And so. I know you always prefer to use a handheld versus a uh, lav or a wireless yeah, mic always. for that reason also, I guess. Yeah, and I assume, so you're yellow. Did you see the first one? I did. Okay, so in the second one, I actually used a handheld and was able to do it instead okay. of just, <laughs> just alluding to it over and over again. I thought that was a funny story when you were talking about where they had those choir microphones at one time in some show you were doing, and so yeah. they picked up everything. And so they heard my whole, basically the whole act. So. <laughs> Including but, the queuing. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I look forward to uh, more things you're going to be doing. And uh, Thank you so much. So you're going to be taking Matt King's place eventually once he no, retires as soon. No, he's eternal, <laughs> I hope. Well, it certainly hope so. I think you got some fans over here then, too. And so it's uh, good seeing you. Thanks a lot, Nick. And uh, good luck. Talk to you later. Nick out. (laughs) Scotty out. All right. So while we're still in the dealer room, it's the first time I've seen Gabe Fiore without a huge crowd around. You've been doing pretty well, it seems like, at least from uh, the look of all the people around your booth. Yeah, well, Nick's book has been very popular. I'm looking at the last five copies out of the 150 I brought. Uh, yeah. It's been a very lively, active, you know, dealer room. I'm, I'm very happy. I think Stan has really done a good job. He always does good with this, and I know he also requests everybody to have something new uh, that has been offered any other place, and so everybody comes with an expectation. Oh, I want to get the newest and greatest, sure. and this is the place to come. Absolutely. And so Nick's is the newest and greatest book, huh? I don't even well, have Max Bellini, too, I guess. Uh, that's about a month and a half old, but yeah. um, this, I don't even have more copies back at home. I mean, I'm waiting for the the big shipment to come in from overseas, and right. Lord only knows when that'll be. So and When they're down there, they're done. When they're, yeah, when they're in Chicago there, th- then we'll ship the other one. I was talking to Nick about that. He was saying it's part of the supply chain, so backed up. Yeah, they can't. Um, they're in California and have been for weeks, and every two days I write and I say, what's the story? And they say... We don't have enough train cars. We don't have enough drivers. We don't have enough truckers. So it's there just literally waiting to be picked up. Right. Hurry, wow. up, hurry up and wait. It could be another three weeks for all I know. Wow. Wow. Yeah, I'm just kind of held hostage by the situation. But, you know, I'm sympathetic to it. I, You know, I'm not driving the truck. You know what I mean? <laughs> of course. Now, between this and August, have you got anything else? Are we going to be going to the IBM convention in Atlanta? No, I'll be at, uh, the next convention I'll Abbott's. be at is Abbott's, yeah. That's what I was wondering, in yeah. August, I'll yeah. see you there. Yeah. You're not going to Quebec? No, I just, I travel so much for work for Potter and Potter. I, I just, you know, I can only go to so many conventions a year because I'm always going to look at a collection or pick one up. I, I'd like to go to Quebec, but it's just too much. When is the um, next Potter Potter auction? Saturday. And who's it going to be featured? Uh, we, some unbelievable Houdini stuff that uh, has been in the Houdini family, actually, for like over 100 years that's never been offered at that auction. Wow. The first known photograph of Houdini performing a magic trick. Who are you expecting to come in? The usual suspects, I guess, of uh, John think, Cox and, Kier and uh, David I, Copperfield? I think it'll be a lot of people. I think, you know, that's a historically significant piece. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, you know, Library of Congress doesn't have one of those. I mean, it's literally the first photo of them as teenagers performing the Metamorphosis. With, with him and Bess or him and his him, brother? Him and his brother when they yeah. were the Houdini Hardin. brothers. Yeah, yeah. Hardin, yeah. yeah. 18 years old and 16 years old. So what is the estimated value? That it's going to be uh, 15 to 25000 So yeah. we'll see see where it goes from now, there. Now, this last one, I was talking with Chip, and he was telling me that there were some pretty high prices for the Houdini things. Something went for 175 or what was the Am I thinking about the light heavy chest or there was that something? Was, that was more like 150 for that. Okay. Um, the last sale, last classroom and sale we did... Well, that was... You're taxing my memory. I, I, I don't remember. It was, okay. That's, yeah. That sounds about right. Maybe that was what he was talking about. Was yeah, it light yeah. heavy? Could be. Yeah, okay. could be. Yeah. And then we sold uh, Jermaine's rose bush in there for over $100,000. We sold... I mean, it was a spectacular... Uh, it's the highest grossing all-magic auction of all time. What was the total at the end? It was dollar? just under $2 million. Yeah. And all in one day? All in five hours. <laughs> And for those people who haven't uh, watched this, number one, you can order a catalog and get information beautifully uh, photographed. Uh, catalog. Who is it now that uh, David and Sell's gone? Who, who, who photographs this? Uh, Shelby Shelby Ragsdale, our photographer. Okay. She's she's fantastic. Beautiful catalogs that you yeah. have. So you can order the catalogs and also that you can watch the auction online. Even if you're not bidding, just kind of seeing the things. It's fun just to, to watch things and the way they go. If you like bad jokes, I'm your guy. <laughs> you keep things moving along. Try I wouldn't to. say... And Tried you got to. to. Tried to, yeah. It's hard to be an MC for five hours. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it is. And do mental math at the same time. Yeah. yeah. To, to handle all that stuff, yeah, it's going through there. Well, it's been great. And that, uh, so uh, you hopefully have less stuff to carry back with you. Already a mission accomplished on that front already. That's ex- excellent. Yeah. Well, it's good seeing you. What have you enjoyed the most? Or have you had a chance to see anything I, outside? I, I don't go to the events, unfortunately. I'm a man in the booth. Because you're... The only I'm man. I'm the guy. I'm the guy. Okay. I'm the man yeah. in the booth. I'm the one the booth. right now keeping people from buying stuff from you while it's I'm okay. bothering you. Thank All you right, very Scott. much, Gabe. This <laughs> for the Magic Word Podcast. Gabe Yuri at Potter Potter. Scotty out. So as we're walking and talking from the dealer's room, I have with me a good buddy of mine and friend of yours, Sue Rudy Colby. Hey, Rudy. Hello, Scott. <laughs> Scotty in. Scotty in. I am. Uh, it's good to see you here. And uh, you wearing your Vans? Of course, you're wearing your Vans. Of course. How many pair of Vans shoes do you have, by the way? Um, I always have uh, at least three pairs. Did you travel with me? No, I don't travel with any. I always have um, two pairs for the for the show. Yeah. That are perfectly clean, and then uh, one pair that uh, I wear. Do you throw them in the? Uh in the laundry? I mean, just in the uh, no, washer? No, I, I don't do that because uh, I've known um, Steve Van Doren, who uh, his father created Vans. So he, um, I've been sponsored for 30 years I know. or more. Because you, you get your Vans for free. That's right. So I, so, I, so I don't even have to carry them in my luggage. Yeah. So I go to China, I can call them up and say, oh, I'm in Shanghai or wherever. I mean, literally they anywhere. They can send them to you? And not even sending. There's oh. a van store in every country? city in the world. Yeah. Every city in every country in the world. So then... And Steve uh, sounds like Steve's kind of got like Randy Pitchford money. He he does. <laughs> they, um, they bought the company thirty years ago. He so he had hundreds of millions of dollars, but he stayed on as vice president in charge of marketing. So even even though he um, has all the money in the world, he loves doing it. But so yeah. all the thousands of van stores all over the world, he literally visits them all the time. So. So we can call and say Steve Van Doren called and Rudy Kobe's coming in to pick up his sneakers and where whatever country it is. Wow. Yeah. Now he also gave you, I assume, that um, Van Mobile because you had that, like golf cart, so it looked like a shoe. <laughs> <laughs> well, he van didn't van. Give, he didn't give it to me, but essentially what he does, it, it, and yeah, so basically it's a, a giant shoe that I can drive around, and uh, so yeah, he, so if I if I need it in Vegas or I need it in L.A. or you know, he mainly for has parades, drive I guess. Huh? Mainly in parades. Yeah, I think you know it's, it's it was amazing. They had two of them made, and then they were in Mexico, and they had a uh, they were on a soccer field, and then they had a, a giant soccer ball made. Yeah. It was like 15 feet in diameter, and, and it actually had the, yeah, kicking around. yeah yeah kicking wow. it around the stadium. Amazing. <laughs> So, do you have any uh, thing you're participating in with Magic Live this year? Or are you just hanging out because you're local? Um, I'm you hanging. Talk about? Yeah. Well, no, I'm not. Uh, yeah. Basically, uh, I've never really performed at Magic Live for whatever reason. I've I've been to every convention of the world, but I've never really. I because I, I was traveling around and all that stuff. And I used to do the Stevens conventions yeah. in Vegas and. Um, 
um, IMX when it was here and stuff. Yeah. So anyway, um, yeah. So uh, so Stan uh, reached out to me and basically made me uh, my and my girlfriend Anna Rose um, MCs for the morning just to introduce the uh, oh yeah yeah the sessions on the focus, the sessions the focus right. things yeah. So I think he for people like me or Fielding West, um, you know he'll. Just invite us and, you know. That's why I was talking to Fielding about saying, hey, you're going to be doing anything. And he said, is this where we're going? Over here? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, Fielding was saying, uh, I'm not performing, but I am going to be an MC for some of the focus groups. So that's yeah. what we must be having you do that then as yeah. well. Uh, so have you been enjoying any, uh, the show? And what have you gotten the most out of so far? Uh, I would say that, yeah, my favorite thing was probably uh, Nick DeFott. Yeah. His talk, yeah. And, uh I thought it was really incredibly, you know, uh, dense information. Maybe over the audience's head in a way. I mean, he made it very interesting. But the, he only had 15 minutes to talk only, about something that really should take a lot longer. Well, I mean, you could talk hours about it, but it's amazing because I mean, I literally—he's one of my best friends, and we lived in Randy Pitchford's house. I for, remember for, for a year. year, yeah, <laughs> during COVID. So, um, so I, I, you know, I know Nick's act, you know, really, you know, I mean, because uh, we've had thousands of hours of conversation sure. about like that kind of detailed stuff and and the stuff that he talked about in that lecture was stuff that we haven't even talked about during the hours over, you talk about over yeah, the and, yeah and believe me we've gone through it like all yeah. the influences and all that so and for those people who are listening wondering what the heck was he talking about it had to do with uh stooging well or i should say sage whispering your volunteers on stage right yeah so or, or directing sage directing them so the audience can't hear but yeah. you're volunteer can it's kind of a lost art it's like um you know george schindler's little red table or is that that's carol fox's i guess <laughs> yeah. but i learned for george schindler but yeah the things where you're kind of you know making um, an assistant from the audience your secret stooge yes you right. know and and nick right. basically you know he he made a joke that 65 percent of his act used to be that you know, and I was out in the audience. So I was like, "Well, sixty percent still kind of is," you know. <laughs> so, uh, but he's really um, he's very private about that stuff. So it was it was surprising Did that he opened up to talk about that. Kind of, yeah, maybe figured people would just say, "Huh, that's interesting." Well, that I think that's exactly anything. what. And the thing was, it's like he, he buried it. It was funny because um, I was just I just saw him upstairs. I was complimenting him and, and and you know telling him that you know how much information. I was surprised how much information he actually was giving away in the lecture mm -hmm. and uh, or in his talk. And uh, but also. People haven't necessarily seen Nick DePot's act, you know, so, wow. I mean, no, really. So, okay. I mean, he, you know, he may or may not be performing yes, soon gotcha. at this yes. convention. Yeah. So people will maybe catch up, but I think that he maybe, I don't know, it's a rumor that maybe he, <laughs> maybe he was going to be performing earlier and then, so that yeah. lecture would have been after. Which would have so, made more sense. Which would have made more sense, right. Better place. So when he, um, and, and so he's very entertaining anyway and people know he has a book out so yeah um uh, so I, I anyway i think it's gonna be very funny let's just say if he performed yeah, if he does, another day yeah. and let's just say if he did maybe there'd be uh, it would be um people would rush they would understand well no now time. people will kind of understand what he was even talking about which right. is interesting right know? uh is this who we're going to be going yeah, and chatting I with i think there's only two of them okay Here. you think that's okay yeah i think yeah not going to interrupt too much, is no, it? No, I don't think so. Okay. Where's Emily? I don't know. Uh, she went up. She, she went home? She, no, she went to restaurant. Well, we were planning on uh, <laughs> having a little chat over there, but they're they're not all together yet. Yeah. So we'll have to do this. Yeah, at a yeah later there's time. a secret. Yeah, it's it, yeah. That's one of the projects I've been working on in the past, uh, okay. you know, couple months. Very interesting. Okay. <laughs> Which we'll talk about at a later time. Yeah, we will. If you guys are interested or listening, just email me and say, I want to hear more from Rudy. <laughs> and I'll make it a point. Uh, we'll yeah. talk. So, I just want to let you know that it's funny is um, I have been listening to your reports every night. You know, like I, I okay. like put it, yeah, and put it in my ear as I go to sleep to see what I've missed. You know? Well, thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, Rudy, thanks very much. Thank Appreciate you. It's always a good pleasure to chat, chat with you. So. That was Rudy, Rudy out. Yeah, Rudy out. <laughs> it's Lab man out. out. Lab man. Focus sessions with uh, our, Paul, our Paul Wilson. And earlier today, we just had the first general session, and uh, we're kind of in between focus groups then right now. I'm here with Neil Stonker. Hey there, Neil. How are you? Thanks for having me. Well, I'm very glad uh, to uh, chat with you here. I've been wanting to for a while. I saw you at the Magi Fest earlier this year and did a really great job. Jugglers always do a great job, which, by the way, you are a juggler. So. Correct, <laughs> yes, I love to juggle. You also love magic, or, I mean, why? Yeah, I love magic, too. Like, uh, 
to Ger Kopper in the Magic Art Center in the Netherlands. I got mm -hmm. more used to magic. Mm -hmm. And I have a couple of magic effects in the show, not as much in my regular shows. But it's uh, very we're juggling. It's almost like if you want to do an entire show, just card manipulation or something. Mm -hmm. It's very hard because you have just the moves, but what's the storyline between right. the moves? And it's the same with juggling. You have the tricks. But like it's very hard to find a storyline between the tricks. I would think so for juggling. It's just like, okay, I do balls, I do clubs, I do fire, I do, well, you know, uh, whatever. Yeah, fire, uh, I'm going to try and say uh, uh, hatchets or chainsaws. But yeah, and, uh, and yeah. also the, between the different tricks, there's not so much like a natural connection. So you have to find yeah. it. Yeah. And um, so there's no juggling books that explain how to make a juggling show. But there's right. magic books on how to do a magic show. So mm -hmm. that's where I got a lot of my yeah, information and inspiration. And I try to apply that knowledge on a juggling show because with juggling there's no information available so that's why another reason why I love going to these festivals did you have someone who was a mentor teaching you juggling or did you learn from books or video or what uh, yes I have various people that have helped me but like there was not a single guy that I could find that was like okay that's the he has the full picture so for like six years Daniel Holtzman from the Rospini Brothers he helped me with comedy writing mm -hmm. but then um, he's good technically but not with the numbers juggling that I like to do so now Albert Lucas who is an excellent juggler He just teaches me how to do 12 rings. So it's like I looked for yeah, people that are very good at their niche, and then I learned that, and then it's my job to put it all together to make the show that I wanted before. Do you live in the States full-time? You're from the Netherlands originally yes. then? And yeah, so I was uh, born and raised in the Netherlands, yeah. and then um, I did cruise ships for like eight years. Got a little tired of that after eight years. Now I'm looking forward to doing them again. But then in Pigeon Forts, David yeah. Fee and uh, Jim Hedrick they had the Comedy Barn Theater yeah. and they invited me to be part of that show which was an excellent opportunity to be in the same venue in the same space for, for a longer time so you don't have to travel but still have to do more shows so more of the stuff that I enjoy doing and less of the stuff that I yeah, that just came with the job When you are on cruise ships usually cruise ship magicians will work like a 45 minute show or something uh, jugglers don't do a 45 minute show do you? Actually yeah. I do, and there's other scum out of friends do it as well, but but it's more rare. Like so, it's I think with magic you have different disciplines. You can something float, something like this seven or whatever thirty right. thirteen. Animal effect, right. Yes, right. and with with juggling, if you look at it that way, you go you can throw stuff and you can balance stuff, and that's basically it. Yeah. So it's more difficult to f create a longer show with juggling. That David is David Ebel is someone who's taken it to a different level in which he finds different things that he can do with balancing coat hangers, like you said, on his nose or catching something in marshmallow or, or whatever. But uh, uh, And then he does comedy in between, so he kind of uh, combines the two in making it a longer show. Do you do a lot of talking in your show then, too? Uh, I, I do, yeah. Like, it's maybe 50-50. Mm -hmm. But then if you think, like, stand-up comics, they can have, like, a long show. True. So then if you think, okay, then if you think you're, for your show, it's like, okay, I'm approach it that way but I intersect like really cool tricks mm -hmm. then suddenly the task doesn't seem as daunting anymore because then you have a, an example how you can get to it and it's like okay I talk and I do cool tricks instead of like okay how do I do just cool tricks for 45 minutes and keep it interesting did you ever get a chance I'm assuming you didn't meet Garrett Copper uh, actually he was one of my best friends yeah was he really okay yeah. so he, I mean you look too young to have remembered him yeah Ger had a studio and uh, we created an act together actually it uh, was a juggling magic act ah, okay. so uh, because I explained this problem to him and then he was like okay let's uh, and he was also like I mean you look like you're 18 that's why I was okay <laughs> thank you so much I'm 36 so okay. yeah double the age but uh, yeah Ger was awesome so and then he passed away like two years ago so yeah. it was super sad but like uh, he had a way of thinking how he created acts because he created so many wonderful acts and Deep with Jan and, and Marcel, uh, Prince of Illusions, and, and they all got, all these guys won prizes at FISM. So yeah. it was like a track record. If you help work with him, I mean, four out of Almost five, sure. four, four or five people won something at FISM. Like it's incredible. And then he helped me with uh, the way of thinking, how to yeah put some meaning to certain routines. And yeah, so he was one of my mentors as well. Now you're here at Magic Live Convention, and I know we, we just talked about you were working then also at the Magi Fest in Columbus earlier this year. Do you work many conventions uh, now, or only mostly corporate and, and uh, cruise ships and yeah, so, uh, theme parks? It's a it's a bit of a mix. So when I was at the, the Comedy Barn, it was like the main gig. So we did like two shows yeah. every day during the summer, and then throughout the winter, like one show a day. Uh, now it's like uh, state and county fairs, mm -hmm. and I'm working on a. Yeah, actually, I'm training a lot because my goal is not to juggle 12 rings. So that's one of the one of the things. I, yeah, that I'm working on every day. So I go train at the community center twice twice a day. Yeah, and then I do the shows at the state and county fairs because they pay pretty good. So that affords right. me then to to train. Because typically, jugglers are. <laughs> 
are appreciated way out of uh, proportion to magicians at magic conferences. Yeah, every audience is different, and I think uh, magicians they really love magic. Uh, yeah. They love magic, but like they love like juggling, juggling a lot because they uh, they know the skill. Like it's so obvious. Like the good thing with juggling is besides being able to do surrounding and stuff, like all your moves. They're out there. You don't have to hide anything. So if you right. do it well, it looks more impressive. With magic, the, the problem, if you do it well, nobody notices it. I remember talking with uh, Pat Hazel, so many, gosh, a couple decades ago, and he was saying that he appreciates jugglers more than magicians because uh, you can't go to a, mag- or to a juggling store and buy three clubs and juggle tonight, whereas you can go and buy a deck of cards and be- do a show tonight. You know, magicians can learn a trick and do it almost immediately. Jugglers actually take a lot of skill. Yeah, well, I think with the good, like good magicians, you cannot buy, buy your act somewhere, so you need right. to develop it. So I think its problem is like the lowest entry level mm-hmm. for magic is lower because you can get somebody's script, you can right. with somebody's props, and with juggling that that shortcut is not there. Right. And it's maybe the same than if you have a, a singer or something, you mm-hmm. can just buy sheet music and then just perf- perform somebody else's song. Right. Right. And then, uh, and that's also then, the entry level is lower, but then you can work with the material from the really great. Right. So that's why I also juggler, like, the, it's hard in the beginning to get started because like with kids' birthday parties or shows, people see so much bad juggling. Right. So then to rise to the top to, to get the respect, mm-hmm. that's more difficult to get to that point. Because, right. and that's too, like when you do jokes and you do somebody else's jokes, not, not appreciated. But like if you're a singer right. and you do somebody else's song because you bought it, that's, that's cool. Right, yeah, that's different. It's, that's interesting. Well, now we're here at Magic Live. What have you enjoyed or seen today or yesterday so far? Uh, I got in yesterday late, so I've only seen a little bit, but I, I'm so impressed with the quality of the speakers and the presentations. So one thing this morning was with uh, yeah, the general sessions, yes. and they spoke about some of the stuff that we're talking about now. Like, right. uh, it's like with uh, putting a premise to the tricks and how difficult it is, if, for example, if you do card manipulation, to, uh, to do that. And then I go, okay, how can I... With lessons here, because they're talking about magic, but like I do a juggling show, so how can I take all the information that is presented here, turn it into information that is useful for me? And and it was so cool. Like some of those things were like spot on, and some of the things that subconsciously I know, and then it clicks, and you go, okay, now I understand what I always felt in the show. Right. It's like how to do, create a juggling show, and uh, what to look for, and. Yeah, with a deeper meaning, because with juggling you don't have the storyline, as with magic. But then he was like, okay, with these moves, we really like and want to perform them. So I have to keep them short, right. or I have to do it this and it this way. And I go, okay, right. that's so smart. Because it's not about the method, it's about the effect. Yeah, so that's the thing with magic. Like they, there's a part of it's about the, the methods and, and stuff, yeah. but then a lot of it's uh, psychology, performing art and stuff. And if I'm on stage and I'm doing the same variety art but different there's yeah. so much interesting stuff and that was one of the points this morning i was like wow yeah like i felt it for years and now i understand it that's great well niels thanks very much also thank good you. to see you thank you so much <laughs> you're welcome so for the magic world board podcast that was niels dunker scotty out all right so we have uh, again finished uh, the afternoon sessions and the focus groups and everything and we're just having an opportunity for a lunch or a dinner break or a meal break depending on what time you wake up of the day and i'm here with uh, my friend and you're seth kramer hey seth how's it going hey how are you doing scott fantastic thank you for asking and tell me have you have you been enjoying this convention so far? yeah it's been fantastic really uh great time it's just so great to be out of uh to be with other uh comrades yeah. you know at this thing speaking of comrades i think it's interesting i noticed that you were sitting over there with uh uh, a couple of guys who were other trade show magicians. Yeah. Uh, and then as well, you had Shep Hyken, and I saw you with Paul Gardner and everybody. Gardner, and, I, yeah. and sometimes whenever I see the mind readers, I see like the t- uh, Evisons that are sitting with some of the other mind readers. Seems yeah. like uh, like birds of a feather kind of a thing. We've been friends for so long, sure. you know. Yeah. So we just we, we kind of plan that in advance. We all know we're going to be here, and uh, you know we all come we all come to it. What have you seen so far that you really uh, have uh, loved or liked? Well, or? I love seeing all my friends. You know, sure. that's really been uh, mm-hmm. a highlight. But as far Especially as after the, two years, absolutely, absolutely, yeah. and some of them I haven't seen even longer than that. Mm-hmm. But uh, this has been really, uh, really a great convention. You know, Stan always does such a great job. Uh, we just saw Eric Mead at the uh, spent an hour with him over at the uh, the close, close up, up uh, sessions there, mm-hmm. and. Um, yeah, the uh, the the uh, show with uh, Rob Zbrecki yesterday was was really really fun to watch, mm-hmm. and uh, and the general sessions are always uh, very very interesting. Really, Luis Tomatos, uh, Luis Tomatos did a great job. That uh, does stand well. out in my mind. That too. stands out in my mind. It's just amazing what he was able to accomplish during this pandemic. Uh-huh. 
uh, mind-boggling. You know, I, I look at what I was able to accomplish and what he was able to accomplish, and I feel very inadequate. That was one of my questions. I often ask people over here about what you've been doing during the last two years when you've had some time. Think, okay, well, it's going to go a couple of weeks, maybe a month, and then it goes on. And at some point, you're saying, okay, I'm going to have to dig in and maybe this project that I've been putting on the back burner is time for me to do. Have you get, done anything like that over the time? Well, you know, like anybody else, you know, we, we all had to pivot. And we had, all had to make a living. So I did uh, pivot at one point after, you know, really heavy deliberation to do some virtual shows, so which. You know, I, I learned uh, a lot. I'm happy that I did it because I learned a lot about something called ECAM and took a class from a guy in England who, who did this along with some of my other trade show friends and was able to put together a pretty good presentation, all things considered. But it, I just, in the end, found it a real soul-sucking experience. <laughs> well, I can understand that, uh, particularly whenever that as a trade show magician that you're used to having large groups right in front of you all the time and trying to get them interested in the product yeah you know? exactly it, it's yeah. really uh I, I need that i need the contact i need to be you know yeah. my, my whole you know i, I perform close-up magic you know probably you know even strolling magic probably at a hundred thousand tables or more in my life you know and then i think about those you know people and how many you know probably over a million people you know, you one, by one by one by one by mm-hmm. one literally one by one so it's really this yeah. was a totally different experience and not not one that i choose to go back to anytime soon. That's kind of like uh, like with Franz Rari, who's, who's performing for millions of people, yeah. and you're really more individual-based. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I need, I, need the, I need the interaction. I think that some of the interesting things, by the way, going back to the uh, convention that we had like in the session today, I had not heard of or knew any of the people who they were talking to uh, today who were Talk about their journey, basically, who are right. robot people. Right, you know. yeah, I never heard, heard of them, although um, I, I am interested in that topic, oh, you yeah. know, all, all the way from Robert Houdin, you know, and, mm-hmm. and always the been automata. interested. The automata, yeah. Um, I, I've always wanted to see Johnny Gaughan's collection, and someday I hope to see you that. Will. It's awesome. Yeah, <laughs> which, and uh, yeah, it's, it's fascinating. And, and those are kind of nice, and not everything is based on magic, you know. It's, things can be magical, mm-hmm. but not necessarily magic, and you know, it's always nice to learn something different. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And that's one of the advantages here, I think. Again, you do get to see such a, a broad variety. It's not necessarily, well, a lot of magic conventions could be that way. Let's say an IBM or SAM convention. But this is not so much about tricks as it is about the engagement, the theory behind it, I think. Yeah. You know? And uh, that's what I like about it. I like I like exploring topics that I don't know a lot about. And internationally. I think we get to, to, to hear other people from different cultures bringing in their input. Absolutely. Too. Absolutely. And the... the uh, the Japanese uh, manipulator who was on this morning was really, uh, really very interesting, really fantastic. And David Regal did a fantastic job uh, working that uh, conference. Here's my buddy. I think David, Rang- David Regal did a great job. We're talking. Hey there, David, right now. There you are, David. Yep, you stepped into it, man. Uh, <laughs> you got to talk. You didn't see the microphone. Oh, no, the size of this microphone is making me feel insignificant. <laughs> I thought it was funny you said that even that uh, Yuki was taller than you, oh, no. the, the Japanese guy. That, uh, yeah, you can't actually mention the nationalities, I realize now. Oh, you can't? No, I can't mention nationalities, but yeah, I think generally the Asian population of the world is considered to be of smaller height than Americans, and yet I'm much shorter than the UK. <laughs> well, we were just, uh, several people I've talked to today have said that was really a highlight. One of the things you were talking about today, the importance of the effect over the method. Method's important, but I love that analogy of saying, okay, well, you take a peak and it's, hey, it's the three of clubs, and then you can spend $1,000 on something, and you can say, okay, it's the three of clubs. To the audience, it's the same thing. Yeah, well, you know... It was scary doing that talk because, for a lot of reasons, one is, you know, I'm out of practice like a lot of us Mm. are, and I wanted to remember it for one thing, but also I didn't want to seem like it was coming on in some weird critical way or, you know, in some way that people are going to be offended. It's, it's, It's strange, though, how across magic so much emphasis is on method compared to the amount of emphasis on effect. It doesn't mean you need less emphasis on method. It just means it's weird there isn't... That same emphasis, right? In effect, yeah. So that that's you know I think about these things. I literally think about these things at night, and I am glad to have someone to talk to. Well, the it's things you put you put them in your book. I mean, the things that you had already, where you have not only the tricks, but also you have some of the other smaller 
uh, monographs, if you will, that talk about those things. I, I like the way he said monographs. Yeah. Makes me feel like a Mark Twain suddenly. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're important. You know, people, they're, important they're right nuggets. Now is that where, a lot of $2 words. Is, where is the freaking dealer's room? I am lost. <laughs> I'm, go, I'm heading that way myself, okay. actually. Yeah. So, well, are you going to go spend some more money there? I haven't spent any yet. Yeah. So I want to reward myself for a job over yep. by buying my job. well done. Thank you. I need to buy something, A, I don't need, and B, I have no room for. And yeah. that should be accomplished easily. Yeah, very easily. Buy something big. Yeah, buy a book. <laughs> <laughs> so, Seth, thank you very much. Thank you, Scott. I appreciate it. It's good, good talking you. to you. And uh, take care, and I will see you down the road. You got it. Till later. Have a good one. So, Seth Kramer, Scotty out, and David Regal. Well, we just finished uh, one of the afternoon. Actually, I just finished the last afternoon session of uh, focus groups. A couple things are going on, and right into a friend I haven't seen in a long number of years, Tom Cutts. Hey, Tom, how's it going? Cue ball. Good. <laughs> <laughs> I still love that story when Vanacek walked out and he's like, "Am I missing something?" Because everybody's calling me cue ball. <laughs> <laughs> So just the inside joke over here. Cue ball or Tom was uh, working with uh, LNL videos for how many years? You were oh my god! <laughs> I'm gonna guess like 10, 12 years. Is it that long? Okay. Yeah. Uh, of course, now after being in COVID, like people's judgment of years is shot. So <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's true. Time is re- irrelevant. Yeah. It seems like anymore. But uh, during a time when Vanacek and I are out there and doing the Psy series uh, uh, videos and everything, you're working with the cue cards and everything else. And that uh, I yeah, started calling you cue ball. <laughs> so they and actually stuck. Kind of, it stuck. Yeah. <laughs> so I love that. Uh, love that. He's the only guy I know as uh, cue ball. So anyhow, I uh, haven't seen you in a while. So how is the convention going for you? I wanted to find out about just kind of your take on what you've been learning, what you've enjoyed, what you've seen. Uh, so far it's really day. good. It, it is uh, intriguingly broad in its spectrum uh, from the Zabrecki show, which was just like an avant-garde magic tongue-in-cheekish mm-hmm. cool performance art thing to not really knowing how much I was going to enjoy the flashback things of the you know the famous people we know doing their original routines that they sort of cut their teeth on right. and then seeing them doing it and going you know that was actually more engaging than I thought it was going to be so, yeah yeah that was a surprise to me also, the documentary you're talking about over there. I was expecting a documentary film of sort, but there were films that were documenting people's lives and the beginning of how they got started in their journey of magic, basically, out of seeing Mark Kalin, for an example, doing his pool shark act, you know. Yeah. Uh, and uh, back in the 60s, and also uh, Mike Caveney doing his thimble act, or Tina Turner, or Tina, <laughs> Tina Leonard doing um, her doll act, and um, Matt King doing the Viking helmet comedy thing you know so yeah it was completely different and unexpected and a lot of fun uh what about other kinds of focus sessions have you uh, gotten something out of some of the people and we just came out of the alex ramon thing here i was again it just emphasized how on alex is on when he is on stage he Mm -hmm. is on Mm -hmm. and so when he's talking uh he was closing about uh confidence and and the rest of that yeah uh he he owns that. That's it. When yeah. when the light's on, boom, he is on. Yeah. Uh, and that was crystal clear here. It's like he, he could switch from performing Alex to explaining the trick Alex, and it yeah. was entirely two different people. And you could you could see the energy. You could see everything he talked about yeah. in that whole thing. Now, I'm not seeing a thing with Rob Zabrecki yet. Which, which one is that? Is uh, <laughs> it's deceptively called The History of Magic, okay. and it has very little to do with the history of okay. magic. But it is very a very fun kind of avant-garde show i think i see that later tonight okay yeah, possibly so have you seen the close-up experience yet i did i actually got into it uh one of the early ones and uh yeah it's a it's a really cool experience and of course it's always that that venue but the seats are raked so steeply that everybody has a great view right. of it so it's it's a very intimate wonderful thing and uh, right the performers i guess i can't say who they were but well, yeah you can yeah <laughs> uh, because yeah. by the time this goes out everybody will have uh, seen well, that too yeah pit hartling pit and hartling, uh, shirogawa and, and uh, Shu- aussie win and aussie yeah mm-hmm. and it, it's hard to pick a favorite because they all had completely different styles but equally phenomenal <laughs> well the interesting thing about that because i was thinking about it, it's like shoot is doing shoots material some of it has been tweaked and 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 I want to say improved or whatever. It's sort of matured a little bit. And others of it are little new elements and bits that he's brought into it. Uh, so that was interesting. And I'm, I'm sitting there watching this stuff thinking, how many people know 
the the history and the the origins of that you know and mm-hmm. even guys like Pitt Hartling and and Ozzy Wynn they've been doing the close-up shows frequently so right a lot of the people here are going to recognize their material but you know especially from the L&L days it's like do you know what it was like when we, the first whatever the first Bill Malone tapes were being done and the first well, what was that like and, Actually, every time a first performer came in, it was a, a truly magical experience because, I mean, and I'm sure you and, and Banachek can attest to this as well, they come in kind of cold and not knowing what to expect. Right. And literally, my purpose for being there, I wasn't, I wasn't actually an employee or anything, I was just invited to, to hang out for the weekend, mm-hmm. was to make sure that whatever you guys needed got taken care of. Yeah. So if... You're we're kind of our butler in a way. Yeah. We need this, yeah. yeah. It was just like, and it, it go was for it, go to guy. Whatever we need. I wasn't, I wasn't in the production side of it, so I could be like a little bit removed and see like, oh, he's he doesn't have the pen he had. Go get a pen, and then when he's ready for the pen, they're like, there it is. So it was that type of thing, uh, and just putting the performers at ease. I remember, I think it was probably a Bill Malone shoot that. Uh, he was just like, I, mean, I don't remember whether it was the first one or the second one, but he was just like, how's it coming across? How's it going? Yeah. And it's like, that's, I was, I was sort of a middle person. I wasn't the tech crew. I wasn't the film people. I wasn't Lewis telling them, you know, whatever Lewis had to have. Well, it know. was really a lot of fun. And then the uh, fact we had different, they would come out and feed us. They had a, a chef that would come into oh, the yeah. place. It was, and the way they trade the audience as well as the performers and putting us up in the house and everything. And it was just a, a great experience, that's for sure. Well, they, that's one thing that I think is lost uh, in just watching the videos is how somebody's living room became that that theater and the people came in there was a break the people had a lunch a wonderful lunch yeah. they sat those people watched like 8 hours worth of magic and never really seemed dead. They, they I were remember always alive. one of my favorite experiences then also then Thomas whenever we were uh, the crowd had left and uh, we had the chef who was there and Johnny Thompson and Fielding West were I think in Tahoe or in Reno or someplace nearby and they came over and we had dinner there with yep. uh, Louis Flanga and everybody and it was just a wonderful evening dinner. You know. That happened very frequently. It's like whoever was in Reno or in Tahoe would come over and, and have dinner because they wanted to meet with the people who were doing yeah. the shoot or yeah. whatever. So there was a lot of elbow rubbing and just sort of hanging out and telling stories and oh, yeah. just having fun, like hanging out. And that's like, for me, that was the payoff. It was like I got to hang out with these people yeah. and to some extent be a fly on the wall. And, well. Uh, I'm going to let you go, but just one last thing. When we were just talking before we got on the, with the microphone over here was that some people have asked me before that it would be great if you can get in touch with some of the people who were in the audience, like you said, John, and some of the other people who were fan favorites, I guess, yeah. basically, of getting them on the podcast to kind of get what their take was of what they did and what they how they got on the show and everything. So I think it would be a lot of fun. So hopefully through you I might be able to reconnect and maybe get to talk to some of these people in the future. So we'll see. Yeah, I think uh, – <laughs> I'll see what, what, what they're still connected yeah. through uh, through the staff, and we'll go from there. I'm putting you on the spot right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thanks a lot, Cubal. I appreciate it. Man, this has right. been fantastic. Thanks, Good seeing you. So the Magic Word Podcast. That was Tom Cutts, a.k.a. Cubal. That's got to yeah. So we are now at the uh, Rob Zabrecki Show. What is this called? The History? I'm mean, well, sorry, with Alex Boys. Hey, Alex. Hey, Scott. <laughs> So what is this, is this called? The discovery of magic, or something like I that? I just gave away my ticket. Yeah, history, I did too. history of magic. History of magic. Yeah, which, with history, i.e., kind of like the uh, discovery of witchcraft. Discovery of witchcraft. Yes. Exactly. Surprises uh, are in store. And we last saw each other when we were at the uh, get together in yes. Cola, Michigan, and we were there at the uh, uh, Amish farm. Well, Amish dinner. That's right. Delicious. Are you going to be coming this year, by the way, again? Or are you just, that was a one off thing? Yeah, definitely. I love Colin. Uh, you know, we'll see. Hopefully, it can make it work. So, what do you think about this convention, by the way? I'm so happy it's happening. It's so great to be with so many people. The first night was like almost overwhelming, just the gathering of everybody here. And, you know, I'll tell you what I've been doing is I've been getting autographs. So, I went around. Oh, no kidding. And huh, people have been so me. generous. I, no, well, Scott, I barely <laughs> haven't talked to you. Uh, and so, just so, tell would you tell your listeners what's going on because there's noises that they hear i'm sure uh they heard a little, a little bit here in the background we're watching a video 
and some I'm not sort sure of what pre-show video. It looks like it's in reverse of like disturbing events. I'm it not sure. It looks like the the shuttle that blew up backwards. Right. So that will be involved with our our evening. I it's setting the tone, it maybe. Maybe. But you know, I'm having a great time at Magic Live. The general sessions have been wonderful. The shows have been great, and I've seen have so many friends. Uh, have I bought anything? No. But did you see the seance at Tannins? Yes, I did. You mean the Ooh, table limitation? Yes. Did you buy that? Uh, I'm thinking well, about it. I, well, I did because it's very cool. It's an impromptu table uh, levitation. It's and called it's Lift. Lift. Lift that's yeah. right. At Tannins.com, you can buy your own. I'm not even on the payroll. Here we are, commercial. <laughs> No, I, I, I did that. I saw that, and I experienced that, and I am considering it. Yeah, I'm just, I, I'm just always so impressed with what they do with building out the booth and making it a, an experience. They built, like, a secret back room in their booth. And did you kind of grow up in Tannins? I did. I, I grew up at the shop and uh, going to the camps and then was uh, honored to work there for a couple of years, and it was a great time. And uh, so I, I'll always have a connection with Tannins. Adam Elbaum over here worked at Tannins in the Tony Spina days. That was a while back. He's got some incredible stories. If we only had time, we have so little. I'd right recommend now. him as a guest sometime. I should probably show. have you on. Yes. Sure. Definitely so. Any other conventions you're planning on doing, or are you? Uh, as they come up, you know, I'll honest, I'll say it's hard to plan for things more than three or four months in advance right now for me. Yep. Because uh, as a magician. The, a lot of events are getting booked and shows are getting booked three or four months out instead of six months out, seven months out. So it's hard to know when I'm going to have a, uh, a free week. Because of COVID? Uh, I think so, especially because, you know, things are uh, a little unsure, a little uncertain at the moment. Yeah, are we free or not? Is exactly. there another variant or whatever, right? Exactly. So it's a little hard to plan you in You haven't events. done any traveling overseas, I assume. Uh, no, no overseas. Everything's domestic right now for me. Mm-hmm. But, but thankfully, a lot of domestic travel. In the next couple of weeks, I'm in Hawaii and Colorado and Nebraska and um, all over. If anybody is in Nebraska listening to this, uh, there's a great show happening. It's called the uh, Great American Comedy Festival. It's going to be myself, Matt Marcy, and Andrew Goldenhirsch. It's Johnny Carson's hometown. Yep. And, uh, yeah, Pat the Hazel Smothers too. Brothers. Yeah, great. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Pat Hazel's hometown. <laughs> Dick Cavett, too. Yeah. I lived in Omaha for a while. Oh, did you? Yeah, I did. That's where I got to know Pat, actually. Oh, that's great. Yeah. I had no idea. Yeah. Awesome. What, what about you? How, how's your convention experience been? I've been having just a wonderful time. Exactly, Alex, what you were saying, as far as seeing friends, this has been an opportunity where we've had a lot, had a lot of people who've been like a, a pebble in a slingshot, just ready to kind of let go and head out. And yeah. everyone's Absolutely. so anxious to get out. I mean, there's nobody here wearing a mask. I mean, as I look around, not I think many. I might see one. But not many masks. Not many masks. I think everyone is just kind of feels like, okay, well, I think we're good to go. And yeah. it's been, uh, I, I haven't heard of anybody leaving or any problems or anything. It's not like this is a super spread or anything. So well, anyhow, right. uh, yeah, Vegas has been great. We've been having a lot of time. Did you come early or saying late? You're going to see a show? Did you see a show? Nope. Came on time. I have to leave on time, unfortunately. Uh, But I will say, you know, one thing uh, people have always say about Magical Live, and I've said myself before, is it's so big that you see people for 30 seconds and never see them again. And I don't know what it is about this year, but that has not been the case for me. I feel like I've really been able to spend quality time with a lot of people. Yeah, It's been really nice. Well, that is true. I have run into some folks, and I've actually had some quality time to sit down and chat with them. Yeah. Uh, I'm actually coming out in June. I'm going to rent an Airbnb for the whole month of June. Oh, cool. So I can actually have time to actually see people, have breakfast and lunch, and not have to worry Fabulous. about running out of town or catching a flight or whatever as right. quickly. Great. So well, that's nice. So to, awesome. uh, to that then, too. It'll be warm. Well, uh, are you planning on at all? Have you uh, contacted Scott Pepper down in San Antonio for his theater? No, I haven't. Uh, There's but I've heard spots some cool stuff. Yeah, that's yep. great. Uh, Scott's here at this convention then also, and uh, awesome. that's somebody you ought to think about coming down and uh, checking cool. out that show. Then, that too. would be great, yeah. yeah. I'll have to check it out. You're still What's doing Monday Night Magic, I guess? Monday Night Magic in New York, uh, the McKittrick Hotel Speakeasy Magic, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So, yeah, if you're in New York, please come check out the show and enjoy it. And where can they go for more information on that? The McKittrickHotel.com. There we go. Alex, thanks very much. Thank you. you know, by the way, just one last thing. Yes. That you were one of the people who had attended uh, the Magic Cuba. There yes. were several of us I've noticed who have been here. I've talked about Including that. Including John Rose. Yeah, John Rose is even here. That's right. And 
it, it was one of the best conventions ever. I ever talked about this so many times for the podcast in the past of saying you guys should come in and, and it was a one-off ever. They're never doing that again. No. That I can't imagine, <laughs> even if they wanted to, I don't know how you could even do it. But, uh, yes, remember every restaurant we went into, it was like, this is where the Pope ate, this is where President Obama ate. And the acts were amazing, the culture was incredible. And we got to see a very specific look at Havana because it was a government sanction program. Correct, for artists. Yes, I remember walking down the street at one point, and there was a wall built across the middle of the road. I don't remember that. And we were like, what's over there? And they were like, no, 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 come this way. Uh, yeah, it was really wild. Um, but, you know, an amazing experience. And, uh, and the food? Food was incredible. We stayed, you know, the the hotel met, was filled the with National. history, national. And yeah, everywhere you went, you go you go up to the bar and they go, what do you want? Do you want a rum and Coke or a mojito? And you go, well, maybe a Cosmo or something. No, no, you want a rum and Coke or a mojito? Right. Uh, or a, and a cigar. Yes. I, re I remember one afternoon I thought I'd get some ice cream. I walked around the middle of Havana, and I found a place with big pictures of ice cream and ice cream on uh, the outside in Spanish. I go inside. They have empty ice cream containers. And I go and I say, is there any way I can buy any ice cream? And the woman looked at me like I was insane. She was, why do you think we have any ice cream here? I was like, okay. Well, because, well, okay, never mind. Yes. <laughs> Because there's just those crazy circumstances. But, uh, yeah, and, and the shows were amazing, and, yes, an incredible experience. It was lovely. Did you uh, attend anything here the, this evening? Have you seen the... Um... I saw the walkthrough exhibit with the automaton. That yep. was amazing. The finale is just astounding. It's just incredible work and so inspiring. And it was cool. I, I love what they do at Magic Live. They've done in the past with some of the optical illusions and different painters where yes. they talk to them in a general session and give them uh, uh, you know, a little museum so you can get a close look at, at the end of the night. Yep. And uh, yeah, the museum is really cool. Did you also see the, one of the other shows? I mean, like I just saw close Truth, show. Light, Truth, Truth, Lie or whatever. I didn't see was. that one yet, but yeah, the close-up show was incredible. Pit Artling, Shudagawa, Aussie Wind, Home runs, like, all around. All great. Yes. Yep. All, great. Amazing. all right. Well, we're getting ready to go. Here we go. And I would recommend, by the way, speaking of Rob Zabrecki, who's hosting this show this evening, you got to mm -hmm. check out his his uh, YouTube videos. Oh, aren't they amazing? The seances, the other side. The other side. The other side. By uh, Rob Zabrecki. Check it out. 